And today is food rice papers, take 47. At least it was not 447. No, we're doing good today. We're making yeah, progress. We are. This group of rice papers came about the same with the florals that you've seen recently and some others that you'll see at some point too, probably before these. These come right from Elizabeth's sketchbooks. And I looked at them and I said to her, we have to do something with them. We just can't hide in the sketchbooks forever. <laughs> Food seemed like a little bit of an unusual subject matter, but these were so pretty that I decided we really had to find a way to use them. And then we started to play with them today and we ended up having a really good time. Well, we really, and I know that food sounds unusual, but it's because you're calling it food. Really, what it is, is the art of eating. See, it, it, the fine artist has to explain to me what the heck is going on. <laughs> it is the art of eating. So it was food that I thought had a lot of good shapes and colors and inspiration for my, uh, my journal in Italy. So yeah, the art of eating and um, yeah, I had fun making, uh, this kind of remind me of a chalkboard art, you know, with the bright colors on the black, but it was totally inspired by the, um, rice paper, the illustration from my, um, from my sketchbook. And then I used the Posca markers on the black to, to capture that same effect. Uh, and then I made also an envelope. Is that the right way up? I think it is. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Um, the the uh, I hope you like the video. I'm not going to say anymore. We we it's it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> let's right? go do it. All right. Let's All go right. do it. Today we are wicked excited to be presenting. <laughs> That's a New England saying. That's why Barb from Rhode Island is chuckling over there. Uh, we are wicked excited to be presenting these. Um, new set of rice paper designs by me. They are out of my mixed media sketchbook from Italy. And speaking of Italy, that is also where the rice papers are printed. They are UV resistant. They're beautiful, beautiful quality, 30 GSM, nice, thin, durable paper, glues down beautifully, nice and flat, and has very vibrant, vivid colors. So, like I said, these are out of my sketchbooks from Italy. So this one is the Pomodoro, the tomatoes. And fun fact, this is cappuccino and red wine stain on the back of these. You know, when in Rome, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the next one is lemons, limoni. Um, these are watercolors with purple shadows. And then we get into the ones that are on black, which are lots of fun. So these were on black, smooth and sturdy journal, uh, disc bound journal pages. So this is the gelato sheet. And these are all arranged to have multiple sizes on each sheet so that you can use them in multiple ways. So, um, and it's the bright colors on black for the gelato. Then we have the pomodori, the tomatoes, bright colors on black with white outline. And then we have Limone. Uh, this is the one that I'm gonna be using today in my demonstration. So I did the illustrations for these with some kind of colored pencil sticks, but to create the projects that I'm doing today, I'm gonna use another opaque medium that is permanent, and that is Posca paint pens. So these Posca paint markers will stand up on black because they're opaque and they're vibrant, bright colors. So we're gonna be able to create an effect like this on number 10 panel cards, like this, and envelopes, also black, like this. So we are gonna have a beautiful uh, set of black, cards and envelopes with the vibrant colors and utilizing the new rice paper designs. So Barb has adhered sticky stuff to the back of these two uh, limone cutouts from the rice paper for me. So the, the benefit of the sticky stuff is that it's a double-sided adhesive. It, there's no wrinkling, there's no moisture, uh, it goes down nice and flat and it actually gives it a little bit of rigidity. So when you're going to stick it, you can really control where it goes. It's a little bit less floppy. So that's kind of nice. So we're gonna save the envelope for a second, but the first one I'm gonna do is a vertical invitation. So I'm gonna peel the sticky stuff off of the second side 
So the first side is adhered to the rice paper and then the back side that's also sticky, I just peeled off. And then I'm gonna put this on the, the uh, panel card a little bit down. So I chose to do this down a little bit because I, I thought it would be fun to extend the artwork up above it. Um, and I know that sometimes people are intimidated about drawing, but we are really just gonna look at exactly what's here and copy it. So I'm gonna extend the branch and then I'm just, I'm not even gonna do lemons. I'm just gonna do the leaves in the same sort of shapes with the same markings that you see down here. So you're essentially copying that. And then I thought it would be fun to have the little buds of the flowers and a flower. And they're real simple shapes and you can do it. I know you can, I promise you can. So there's a little flower and then I'll do another leaf. Maybe bring a leaf down behind this lemon. And I think that's good. So then I'm going to make a greeting with this. So I, this is gonna be my lemonade stand invite. So I'm gonna make sure I spell lemonade right. So the, again, the nice thing about these Posca markers is they're emulating, because I did the white outline in these illustrations with this, so we're getting that same style. And then with the extreme opaque qualities of them, we're gonna get that same vibrancy on the black. So you're using a PC1MR in white. That's what you're doing the writing with right now. And it's what you did up here at the top. It's what you did that little extension of the sketch in. And then that stand that you wrote, I want to say is a PC7M. So it's a uh, much broader tip. 5M, 5M yeah. 5M, sorry, that one. what do I know? Yeah, close though. And then this one is the... That's a 3M. 3M, yeah. So I'm, I'm varying the thickness of the markers and the colors for a little variety. So I've got different tips and different colors. And I'm choosing colors that pick up colors from the illustration. So I'm being careful to pick colors that, that are harmonious with the rice paper. So now I'm going to also add color to my illustration up here and I'm gonna follow suit from the rice paper. So you don't have to worry about that. You can just copy the colors and the drawing from down here. So I add a little blue to the leaves like you see there. Now I'm gonna add a little purple. Then I've got a a brown PC3M. I'm going to extend the stem up. Back to the PC3M on the bright green. And then I've got the bigger one, which is the 5M for the centers of the flower. And then the uh, flower and the buds are mostly white with a little bit of pink. And this is super forgiving because it's very sketchy. So that one is the 3M. And I have another 3M with the pink. I'll add a little bit of pink accent in there. And even if you wanted to come in um, and embellish down the the rice paper a little bit, you could do that too. We could add a little pop of white in there. But I like just extending that up so we have a longer illustration, picking up the colors from the illustration and different tip sizes for the sentiment. And that's the lemonade stand invite. And then I'm gonna slide that over here and I've got my black number 10 envelope. I've got my stamp and I'm taking advantage of the smaller Limone illustration and Barb is so graciously added the sticky stuff for me. 
And this is going on the envelope. I'm gonna put that slightly over here. And then again, I'm gonna bring back the drawing and I can keep this one off to the side to look at what I did. I'm just gonna freeform some stuff over here. Here's the buds again and the flower. And then some leaves in the same style. Now, do as I say, not as I do, Barb. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, the post office wants five eighths of an inch clear across the bottom for the barcode. And if you put stuff in the way, they will just put a sticker over it. So try to keep your art and your doodling and anything that you do up five eighths of an inch all the way across the bottom, leaving that space for the post office. So we'll add that and another leaf here. And then we're just gonna come back in the same way. I forgot to bring in the teal on the other one. We well, all love teal, and this is fix that, won't we? this is the teal PC three M. Is that one the, the name of that is Aqua Green? I think. Aqua Green. Look at how smart you are. Well, you know repetition. Yeah. So, and then some of the navy blue. And the purple. Oh, I guess we got to get the green in there. Okay. And then we have our flower centers and the cute little white flowers, white and pink. Oh, this is the one I was addressing with, so I'm gonna go a little thicker. This is the 3M on that white one. Just give me a, a more solid white coverage. So you could also do a little bit more over here if you wanted. You don't need to watch me draw and color anymore, but there's room over here, just keeping in mind not to do a lot on the bottom. So you've got more room up here, you can do fun things. And then you address in here. So I, again, the same way that I use different sort of tip sizes and colors, uh, the post office can read all of these bright colors in white on black, it's not a problem. So I'm gonna, be fun with my colors and this is going to Barb. At the Joggles Warehouse. In beautiful Rhode Island. So there you have a great way to emulate the style and colors of the original artwork from the rice paper with the opaque, vibrant Posca markers on the black cardstock and the black envelope. So while I was um, preparing for this video, I'll just share with you the other two that I did. I used the Pomodori for a... Um, Italian potluck dinner invite. And this one I did horizontally. And again, that's going to Barb in Rhode Island. So I picked up the artwork and used the small one on the envelope. That's tons of fun. And then I have the ice cream social card that I used the gelato rice paper for. And I picked up, the gelato had these little circles full of color in the illustration. So I ran those down the sides of both the envelope and the invite. And I also picked up some of the, the style of this writing. So you can definitely look at the illustrations and pick up elements and pieces and parts of that to add to the way you embellish your envelope and your card.
I hope you have tons of fun with these. I'm already filming here. I don't know what you're doing. We're gonna have to clap when we get there. Can we focus here now? Yes. I like decalage paper, but you cannot get decalage paper in these little sizes, or if you can, it's watercolor paper that's really, really expensive. So my solution is to tear the heck out of smooth and sturdy or watercolor paper, and it gives me something that's very close. All of the sheets, and we'll have shown you this in the introduction, all of the sheets are one image that's repeated multiple times in several different sizes. I like these little itty bitty ones. They work really well. You can arrange them on a journal page. You can put them on a card. You can do lots of different things with them. And so that my solution to not being able to get decalage paper is to just tear. So if you tear this, and paper has a grain, so it's gonna tear a little bit differently in one direction than it is the other, but honestly, it ends up close enough to what you need. So what I do is I just take my piece. These were all done with smooth, uh, excuse me, with sticky stuff, because first of all, gel medium is gonna warp this ba these background papers, and secondly, if I'm working with something like this on a black surface, the gel medium will make this light background so translucent that I'm gonna see a lot of black through it. And the sticky stuff is the answer to not seeing that. So I kind of size this to where it needs to be. I adhere it, and then if I have to come back and trim a little bit out, I can. And you can just do little things like this. You can do little dots that kind of create a little border around there. There's lots of different ways that you can embellish these. Um, certainly the white, you saw Elizabeth using the white Posca paint pens on the black. You could do the same thing here. The thing to bear in mind is that if you want to do any extensive work with Poskas on top of the rice paper, you really need to put a layer of gel medium on there first because otherwise the paint just sucks into the surface. So these are fun little things that you can do with the small elements on the sheets. And then something else that I did was I took some of the larger elements from the sheets Oh, I thought that was upside down. And I kind of matted and framed them. This is a piece of our 9 by 12 cardstock that I cut down and I cut an opening in and then I mount, this is actually so not professional, mount it on a tag because that's what I had and then I stuck it on the back. Ultimately, I'll do what I did here, which is to put something completely on the back to cover it. But I have these three. I'm going to hang these in my kitchen. I really like them. I think that food and kitchen is is a perfect combination and so i'm going to arrange these on a wall somewhere and i'll have an opportunity to look at the artwork i think art supplies in kitchen is the perfect combination well when you're working like we are it certainly is but uh, for me the whole idea about the food was the invitation kind of thing that you saw elizabeth do and then these kinds of ways to display them in a place like a kitchen or a pantry that makes sense and then the last thing now, I can hear those of you who are thinking as Elizabeth was doing her business where she was extend oops, that's upside down, where she was extending the piece up above on her card and, or her invitation in her envelope, and I can hear you thinking, I can't do that. I never have time to draw. All I did was look at this and draw something that was similar. It really is that simple. So I've got sticky stuff on the back here and I've got a corner kind of pulled back. So let's go ahead and stick this on there and hopefully I align it correctly and I don't make it crooked. It wouldn't be the first time in the history of everything that I did. And remembering that sticky stuff is one and done. That looks pretty good to me. It looks great. So the thing that, again, Elizabeth is a fine artist and she paints all of the time she draws. I came in and I colored the leaves and she came back with the white Tosca paint pen, the little PC1MR, and she added some white in these leaves, and it made perfect sense when she explained it. I didn't think of it, but because this background is busy and it's different colors, adding the white in made it look more like this was done on white paper and we weren't fighting the color and the texture underneath. So that made perfect sense to me. Like I said, it didn't occur to me, but it made perfect sense. So one of the things that I'm gonna do is then just put a border around here kind of curly and fun and you know, whatever. I mean, it can be any kind of doodly border that you want. Oops. And I think it just, I like elements or journal pages that have borders. I think that they're far more interesting that way. You obviously don't have to do that if you find that this is not your style and it's not what you want to do. But 
it's that simple. And I have this great page. If I wanted to add words or a sentiment around it, I could. If you can imagine using the smaller version of this in on a card front and doing this kind of stuff, then you can put a sentiment on it and you can create a card. Whether it's an A7 card or you go with the A2, which is a much smaller size, there are enough sizes of these particular images on each of the sheets of rice paper that you have endless options for creating with them. All right. So whether you use these new rice papers in journals or for card making or for invitations to uh, Italian potluck dinners, are you inviting me to dinner? Uh, evidently I am. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you decide to use them for, there's, there's lots of uses and I hope and we hope that you will enjoy them. Absolutely, right? yeah, they're fun. They just are. Yeah, so anyway, that's all from here for today. Bye. See you next time.